All right, we'll look at one more slide and then look at some clips. Uh, I mentioned shimmy. For us, that's when we have a square view, the returner, we're you know, close uh, to the returner, whatever that means. That depends on your, your personal athletic ability. Uh, we talk about just getting under control. It's not about slowing down. It's about getting under control, uh, coming out of that middle section of the play where we're running like our hair is on fire. Um, we talked about when to use it and and uh, and the why. Uh, this is an image that we'll, we'll watch this accompanying clip in a minute, but um, a distinction that we use that I think is good is that, you know, if the returner is right in front of you, like this guy on the right, number 25, if he's right in front of you, your feet are going to be even. You're going to have your, your knees inside of your ankles. You're going to be gaining ground in steps in the grass. Uh, number 43 on the left, if you're offset from the returner, so you have a square view, you're trying to mirror his body and be square, but you're going to try to keep that near foot up and keep gaining ground in that way. So we call that a near foot shimmy. It was kind of like a diagram uh, of if you were in a, a shimmy, if you're shortening your stride to be able to, to go and make a tackle on a ball carrier, uh, this would be kind of your foot uh, positioning based on on uh, where that ball is at. We try not to make it into a science project, but we found that those types of things are helpful in terms of of uh, my feet are either going to be balanced or I'm going to have a near foot up uh, to give myself the ability to make a play on a cutback or um, if the returner bounces it outside of me. All right, so here's a clip. Uh, obviously, this first guy, number two, is taking a shot on the ball. But after that, uh, we have a good clip of two left side players and two right side leverage players. And what we're going to see is right now, their view of the returner doesn't matter much because the, he's obviously getting hit. He's spinning, spinning around and they're a little bit further away. Now that they're getting a little bit closer to him, uh, you're going to see a great transition here by 25. He has a square view. He's going to shorten his stride. This is what we're looking for. His insteps are on the ground and he keeps gaining ground. Obviously, for, for us, that's the, the correction that we find ourselves making the most often is, uh, and that's the reason most coaches don't say, hey, you got to break down because, you know, it, it kind of tells yourself stop. Well, we always want to be gaining ground. Number 43 is doing a nice job as well. And you can see he's keeping that right foot forward so that he can gain ground and close in that way, getting ready to make his same foot, same shoulder uh, contact with this guy. So kind of a, a nice picture of seeing both in the same shot. And the best part, like I mentioned, is that both these guys keep gaining ground throughout the whole play. Sorry, this has a volume on it. I'll go slow motion though. Um, so here's an example of uh, number five right here. He has a square view, the returner. He's playing gunner. Uh, does a great job beating his man. Now he's going to get into a shimmy. What I would love to see, you can kind of tell on this, he's uh, he's kind of slightly widening. Uh, we'd love for him to just front up the ball and go directly at the guy, maintaining a short stride. Uh, we don't want to see this kind of side shuffle. We want to keep gaining ground right at the man. Number 35 is another example from his viewpoint inside of his helmet. He has a side view of the returner. He's going to stride through, go and aggressively take his shot because he could see the ear hole of the man. Number 12 and 25, uh, 12 has more of a square view, 25 is more of a, uh, a side view. We'd love to see 25 go and take his shot through there. And 12 is doing a nice job. He's waiting to kind of see how this is going to unfold and he's matching the returner's feet, continuing to gain ground, but making sure that he has a two way go. A really dynamic returner here from uh, Rutgers. So this ball does not go where we want it to go. Uh, but this clip has a few nice things in terms of, of uh, views of the returner and coverage. Uh, the first thing you'll see right here is number 23. So he has a, a square view of the returner. If you imagine that you're in his helmet, this guy could go either direction. Same thing with him. Now, the problem that 23 is having is that he's not gaining ground, right? We talk about this all the time. We don't want to see this kind of side shuffle. You see how 23 is shortening his stride the way you want but he's drifting. We want to be gaining ground vertically, always closing the vertical space between the returner. He's not doing that right here. He's just kind of slowing down and shuffling sideways. So we need to do a better job there. And then now his view's changing. We need to see a more fluid transition from a short stride back to a long stride when we see 
uh, that side view of the returner. Go and take your shot. Now, 29 down here is doing a very nice job. He's far away from the returner. And then as he gets closer, he has a side view. This guy's not going to be able to make that harsh turn coming back. He's going to go and take his shot, sprint, and go blow this guy up. If you imagine that you're in 25 shoes right here, he has a square view from inside his helmet. He's going to keep gaining ground. His feet are going to balance out just a little bit. He's going to keep close in this space. And so you're going to get a nice two-man cap between those guys. But all this could have been avoided if 23 uh, closes this distance a little bit better initially in the play. And the rest of this, this, uh, this cut up will have a